Welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K23 Next Gen. In today's video, we are finally back with another historic rebuild. And today we have the Kobe and Shaq era Orlando Magic. So this is technically the start of the 2002-2003 NBA season. This Orlando Magic team is led by Tracy McGrady. And in real life, this was his second to last season in Orlando. And this was a season where he averaged 32 points a game. Now, obviously, I don't really want to trade Tracy McGrady. I would like to keep him on this team throughout the entirety of this rebuild and hopefully build around him enough to the point where we can get this franchise a championship. Now, we're going to get into the roster and what it looks like, but obviously this is an era in the NBA where Kobe and Shaq were definitely one of the best duos in the league. They were the best duo in the league, let's be honest with each other. But obviously, we're going to have to do a lot to be able to build and compete with teams like that. There's obviously a lot of talent around the league in general, and uh, yeah, when you see this team, you're going to understand why. I'm happy to be back into historic rebuilds. It's been a minute since we've done some of these, and honestly, right now, the NBA offseason is completely dead, and it feels like as good a time as ever to do these before we obviously get to 2K24 in about a month or so. So if you guys have any other ideas that you want to see, let me know down below in the comments section. Now, obviously, it's much easier to do some of these historic rebuilds when you have the historic rosters. Now, if you want to see something that's outside one of the three eras you're allowed to use, and if you have a roster, that would be really, really great. I'm on PS5, but... If you don't, I can always go ahead and find one. Just let me know what ideas you guys do have down below in the comments section. But I'm happy to be back here with the historic rebuilds, man. Let's see if we can get Orlando and Tracy McGrady a championship together. And a few things before we do go over the roster on this team right now. I forgot to mention the intro because I'm a dumbass. But if you guys do have video ideas that you want to see specifically within the three eras that we can do here in 2K23, go check the playlist before. I mean, I'm not saying you can't comment even if I've already done one, but... Just makes it easier, it kind of saves everybody's time, as I have done a lot of these already. So, let's dive into this roster now. As I mentioned, obviously a 23-year-old Tracy McGrady is great. I am hoping that he continues to play at a very, very high level for me. As I mentioned in the intro, this was technically his highest career points per game ever in a season. He was at 32, almost 33 points a game. And I would really like to keep him playing at that high level throughout the entirety of this video. So we don't play with injuries on. He's locked up on a long-term deal. He's only 23. All are very, very positive signs. We have Grant Hill here. It's going to be kind of a year-to-year -year basis for me with Grant Hill again. He's locked up on a long-term deal, but is also 30 years old. But he's still Grant Hill. I don't want to just let him go for nothing because he's a really, really good player. Uh, Mike Miller's 22. I'm going to see what I end up doing with him. I think in real life, if my memory serves me correctly when I fact-check this, I think he was actually, I think their second leading scorer. So we'll see. Uh, Darrell Armstrong is here. Jacques Vaughn is here. Two solid point guard options. 34, obviously, on Armstrong. And then Jacques Vaughn is only 27, but I don't know. Uh, Sean Kemp is 32. Horace Grant is 37. Two great NBA legends here. We're going to see. I mean, I just don't really know. Uh, Andrew DeCleric, I, I don't know much about. Him. I'm not going to pretend I do. Uh, Pat Garrity, I don't know really much. Actually, I have heard of Stephen Hunter, I think. Uh, Pat Burke, I cannot. I'm horrible with names. You guys know that. Uh, Rolando Cunningham is here, and then I have no idea who Ralph Westbrook is or if he's even real. Actually, I don't really know who Rolando... I don't know. That sounds familiar. All right, though. We have some trades to make. we got to finalize a couple other things. I don't love this front court, to be quite honest with you. I mean, we have a 37-year-old and a 32-year-old technically as our starters right now so and sean ham's contract's not too great so yeah we have some moves to make our first trade's going to be coming here with the philadelphia 76ers we're going to send them horace grant and a future second round pick for greg buckner and honestly this trade is really done for one reason actually maybe two i need a new backup small forward you'll see why in just a second along with the fact that horace grant's 37 let's be honest with each other he'll probably retire by the end of this season even if he does not He's not going to be very good. We get a guy here in Greg Buckner who's on a three-year deal, a pretty good contract, and is only 26, and we only really have to give up a second-round pick. So that feels like a win to me. I'm going to move him to the starting, or excuse me, not starting, the backup small forward spot. He is six foot four, so maybe a little bit undersized, but I think it'll do. And the reason I do need to find myself a new backup small forward is because I'm playing Grant Hill at the four because I want Mike Miller to start and get the most minutes possible. Hopefully he develops very, very well. But that is trade one officially in the books. Our second move is a bit of a risky one and one that I don't really know how I feel about it, but we're still going to do it. Sean Kemp, Pat Garrity, and I think it's Olamide. Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's going to get traded to Phoenix. We're getting Penny back to Orlando. Obviously, him and Shaq never won one together. We're going to see if maybe him and Tracy McGrady can win one together. But he is 31, which makes me a little bit nervous. But we're going to move him back to the point guard spot. And then Bull Outlaw is coming. He's a good depth piece for us. So definitely a risky trade just because of how much money they're all making. But here in 2K, I think it should be pretty easy to move the contracts if and when it does kind of come to that. So 
Penny's over actually goes down to a 76. That kind of sucks to see. But we're going to be playing him at the point guard spot. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm hoping it works out. I don't know if it's going to, but I'm excited to have Penny Hardaway back here. And, uh, yeah, we have a couple more trades. We're making a few more trades than I honestly thought we were going to before year one does begin. We're acquiring Eric Dampier and Chris Giles from the Golden State Warriors. We are obviously looking for an upgrade at the center spot now. And, uh, yeah, I think a 79 overall definitely qualifies for that. So, I think the one thing... So, I'm happy and I'm not... I'm, I don't want to say I'm happy and I'm sad, but I'm happy for the reason that we are getting better players and we're not giving up draft picks. But the scary side of this for me is that we're acquiring some, for the time, large contracts. So definitely something we're going to have to keep an eye on. But honestly, this team has definitely gotten a lot better. I am pretty happy with the way this roster is currently constructed. Again, I'm a little bit nervous about Penny. I, uh, it's obviously a risky move bringing him back here at 31 and now a 76. He was a 78, but you moved him to point guard where he uh, played for the beginning of his career. But I I'm excited to have him back here. I'm hoping it works out for the best. We might have one or two more trades. We're making this trade with the New Orleans Hornets. We're sending them Chris Giles, who we just acquired from Golden State for a future first-round pick in 2005, and a salary filler here in Sean Davidson. Now, this period is strictly to get a draft pick for a guy who's an expiring contract. Feels like a home run deal to me. I might have one more salary dump. I'll actually just do it with you guys because I'm right here. I don't really need Pat Burke, so if there's any other team that wants to give me any sort of draft pick for him, I will definitely do it. I'm not seeing anything that I'm loving right off the bat. And, oh, it's a second, I thought. I saw one star, I just assumed it was a first. Um, I actually might take Brian Cardinal just because he's on a multi-year deal. All right, we're going to do that. That trade's fine by me. Let's set the rotation. So, as I mentioned, we made a lot more trades than I initially anticipated before year one, but I really kind of like the foundation we've set for this team. I think we've gotten a little bit better, and I also think it's going to work out best for us in the long run because we acquired some draft picks. We didn't really give up anything in terms of significant value. I'm excited. Penny Hardaway is back. That contract is big, especially for the time, and it is definitely risky. But I wanted to solidify our point guard option even for the short term. I like Penny Hardaway. I'm hoping it works out here the second go around. Obviously, Tracy McGrady is one of the best players in the league at this point in time. I'm excited to see what he kind of brings to this team. Hopefully, he leads us very, very far into the playoffs. Mike Miller starting at the three. I moved Grant Hill to the four, and then Eric Dampier here starting as my center. The bench is okay. I mean, for the time and how these benches typically work in historic rebuilds, it's not too bad. I'd like to maybe look to improve it this offseason, though. Bo Outlaw going to be our sixth man, followed by Greg Buckner, Jacques Vaughn, Andrew DeClerc, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, Brian Cardinal, Sean Davis. I mean, these guys are here, but they're not really playing, so they're just kind of filling up the bench. It is a nine-man rotation under head coach Doc Rivers. I'll see you guys at the end of year number one. Year one comes to an end for us here in Orlando, and Tim Duncan is your MVP. It's always funny looking back. Tim Duncan was possibly going to end up in Orlando, and I think it was actually, somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but was it Doc Rivers that said Tim Duncan's family couldn't fly on the plane or something like that with the team, and then Timmy D decided to say in San Antonio, was it something like that? Something along the lines of that. I think I saw a video on it years back, but crazy story. Uh, Yao Ming's your Rookie of the Year. Desmond Mason, sixth man. Ben Wallace is your deep boy. Big Z, most improved, Doc Rivers wins coach of the year. So we go 16-22. Obviously, that is great. And uh, yeah, we're hoping to get Doc Rivers a championship a little bit earlier than he technically did in real life. So the one seed here in the Eastern Conference, obviously great. And there's no play in, so we know who we're playing immediately. And uh, yeah, we have the best record in the East and the best record in all of basketball. So it looks like our moves to this point have worked out for us so far. Let's take a look at the numbers on the year. T-Mac, 33 points a game. Beautiful. Mike Miller, Grant Hill, Penny Hardaway was around what I kind of expected. Seven assists is great to see. Honestly, I will take it. I'm taking that pretty much 10 times out of 10 for the point in his career that he is at. Dampier, Lettuce, and Boards, and assists was Penny Hardaway. Honestly, it's great. All right, so the Wizards here in round one. We have Michael Jordan, who's 40 years old, but still bawling the hell out. Jerry Stackhouse, Christian Leitner, Eaton Thomas, Brendan Haywood coming off the bench, obviously Larry Hughes. All right, I think it's, is this best of five or is this best of seven? No, it's best of seven. Okay, I, don't, I forget the exact year they changed it, but the first round used to be best of five. Uh, Allen Iverson in the 76ers. You got Eric Snow, Aaron Mickey, Keith Van Horn, Derek Coleman. I mean, this is a good team. You have two of the best shooting guards in the league going up against each other in Tracy McGrady and Allen Iverson. So let's see if we can hopefully get the best of them here in the second round. Oh, my God. Are we just running through the Eastern playoffs right now? This is great. This is tremendous. Add another one of the best shooting guards in the league here in Vince Carter. Hakeem Olajuwon, who's 40 at this point in his career. But this is still a decent team. And uh, they might give us some problems. So can we get by them? They are a 7 seed, but I think we're better. I, I truly do. We're 2-2 right now. We go up 3-2. 
We're going to game seven and we lose. Oh, oh, the winner was going to be facing German Jesus, Steve Nash. Oh, we could have beat that team. Maybe not, but still, that's that sucks. That's that's pretty tricky. All right, so I, I don't want to be upset because that was a relatively successful first season. I'm not going to sit here and say it wasn't, but damn, damn, damn. I, I thought we could have done it. All right, so Hakeem calls it a career. Kevin Wills, Charles Oakley, Mark Jackson. A lot of guys calling, oh, Michael Jordan calls it a career. Yeah, he ended up being pretty good. Uh, Joe Reeves, I don't know who that is. Hall of Fame, Hakeem Olajuwon, Michael Jordan. Surprise, surprise. And, uh, yeah, let's just check out some of the historic changes that they let you do now. So, I don't even want to do this. I like our uniforms right now. I don't... I'm trying to remember which one they're changing them to, but I kind of like them. I kind of like our uniforms right now. I don't really want to change them. You know what? Fuck it. I'm declining this. I like our uniforms. I think they're cool. I do. If it comes back and they try to do it again next offseason, maybe we'll do it then. But at this point, no. All right. So draft lottery time. Uh, we're not going to have a pick in the lottery. I don't think we traded for anything, and I'm not seeing it. So obviously, we know this is the 2003 draft class. There ended up being a couple of good players in this draft class. And uh, yeah, Detroit is likely going to get LeBron James, which interesting how history would have been. Um, so, Doc, whoa, what are these ratings? I mean, all due respect, Doc, like, you're a, like a solid coach. Like, you're an NBA championship winning head coach, but I can't work with this. Three stars in potential and that's it? I'm, I gotta let you go. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go after the big guns here. I'm gonna try to get Popovich. If he's not gonna do so, I'm gonna go after Stauffer. I mean, honestly, I just, I just can't deal with those ratings. I really can't. So, Pop, it's a no, but Stauffer's a yes. Honestly, is perfect ratings. That's just crazy to me. That's really crazy. All right, so, I mean, obviously, if we look at this draft class, LeBron, Melo, Bosch, yeah, I mean, these are just four Hall of Famers right here. I mean, it is what it is. We have to decide if we want to trade up to potentially get one of these Hall of Famers. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have the assets to do so, but I don't think it would be the worst idea in the world. It's also funny, just like hypothetically how you rank them. I mean, looking back with revisionist history, if I had to rank them, obviously LeBron's one, which they got right. I'm putting D-Wade over Carmelo Anthony, so he'd be two. I'd say Anthony's probably three, and then probably Bosch still four, but that's just my opinion. But I have to make a decision whether I want to trade up or not, so hang with me. So the Utah Jazz have the second overall pick. Now, I don't need to make this trade because we honestly have our starting small forward in Mike Miller. And I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do with the draft pick. But number two overall, when you can draft a Hall of Famer, no doubt, I'm going to do it. Now, Penny Hardaway played decent for us. But at the end of the day, he's making a lot of money. And if I can clear up some cap space while getting a Hall of Fame player, I'm doing it 10 times out of 10. So I don't think they're going to take this. I don't think they're that dumb. But we also have, that was number 14 from the Kings. This is 28 from ourselves. And then I'm sure there's a couple other players down here. Like, if you want Brian Cardinal, you can have him. And honestly, there's probably, if you like, if you, eh. Um, I'd probably give up Jacques Vaughn. And then maybe one future first in like 2005. Would you do that? No, they would not. All right, so I'm going to have to give up somebody of value. Greg Buckner, potentially. They still won't do that. I'm just doing this because I know I'm getting a first ballot Hall of Famer. Like, that's as simple as it gets. I'm doing this, and it's fine by me. So, assuming that Detroit doesn't royally screw up the next 20-plus years of their franchise and not take LeBron James, which they do means we're going to have a decision to make. Now, the second best player out of this draft class, I gave you my opinion. It's Dwayne Wade. If I'm going to get Dwayne Wade, I have to make a decision on what I want to do because obviously I have Tracy McGrady right now. And I have to kind of decide, do I think one of those two players can start a point guard for me moving forward? Quite honestly, the answer is yes. And I really think that either of them would be successful there. And you know what? It's 2K. I'm going to make it work. So Dwayne Wade, welcome to Orlando. Very, very happy to have D-Wade here. Uh, in terms of these draft picks right here, I don't really need them, to be quite honest with you. Can somebody just give me a future first? Thank you very much, Dallas. So that's the trade we're doing. Dwayne Wade is officially a member of the Orlando Magic at an 82 overall. Quite beautiful. It really is. So I don't know whose overall is going to change less if I'm moving T-Mac to, I mean, if we move into point guard, he goes down to a 93. D-Wade doesn't change at all. So Dwayne Wade's going to be our point guard moving forward. I mean... Obviously, great. Drafting a first ballot Hall of Famer, and uh, I'm, I'm feeling good. I, I really am. I think the trade we made to get number two is well worth it for us. So, uh, I don't know who this is, but he's not getting qualified. Let's take a look at free agency now. Obviously, tremendous free agencies here. I mean, Tim Duncan would be a, a joy to have on this team. I just, I don't really see a way that it's probably going to happen for me now. I mean, maybe a Jermaine O'Neal wouldn't be, a, you know, too big of a stretch. We just don't have the money right now, so... If I'm going to clear up the books, which obviously is a big decision, 
If I want to go get Jermaine O'Neal, it probably means losing Grant Hill, maybe even Dampier, definitely Bo Outlaw. So, again, another big decision to be made on whether I want to do that or not. But if I'm going to do that, I have to remember I still need five starters. So, definitely something else is coming. We're signing Earl Boykins here to a two-year deal. I've honestly decided to give this team a season, kind of see how they all fit together. Now, I was comfortable with the nine-man rotation before. I'm especially comfortable with it now because, obviously... Drafting Dwayne Wade, he is here. I think it's going to work out for the best. Also, we made two smaller trades that I just want to show you guys real quick. Um, they're, they're right here. I mean, it was just basically clearing up a little bit of cap space, acquiring some second round picks. But, excuse me, I just started coughing way too much. Uh, we're going to sign Walter McCarty here. Celtics legend on a one-year deal. He's going to come in, and he's going to be my backup small forward. So, hopefully we're not... Oh, who is this in free agency? John Stockton, who's 41. Jesus Christ. Um, and then in terms of the backup center spot, I could just bring back Andrew DeClaric back. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. So I'm going to kind of run it with this team. Obviously, we were an Eastern Conference Finals team last year. Lost in seven games, but I am excited to see how this team kind of bounces back. And we're going to roll with our punches. I mean, everybody here is locked up long term. I'm excited. I'll see you guys at the start of year two. After coming up just a little bit short last year, losing in seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals, we went ahead and made some smaller changes. We redesigned this bench a little bit, along with acquiring a future Hall of Famer in Dwayne Wade. Now, he's playing the point guard spot, so I am interested to see how it works out. But him and Tracy McGrady in a backcourt together is one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. Mike Miller starting here at the three. He was great for us last year. Grant Hill at the four. Eric Dampier here at our starting center spot. Earl Boykins will be coming off our bench as the six man, followed by Walter McCarty, Bo Outlaw, Andrew DeClaric. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a couple guys down here that are really not going to play. So the bench kind of sucks a little bit. It's something we're going to have to keep an eye on, but this starting five is insane. I'll see you guys at the end of year two. What a way to wrap up year two. Tracy McGrady is your MVP, and we go 69-13. and 13. That's obviously great, but we had a really good record last year. Didn't work out too well for us in the playoffs, but T-Mac winning an MVP is a great sign. He played at an extremely high level. you love to see it. LeBron James, Rookie of the Year in Detroit. Obviously went number one overall. Jay Williams, Sixth Man of the Year in Chicago. I wish Jay Williams' career worked out a little bit better. Ben Wallace is your deep boy. Keon Dooling, that is not a name I have not heard in a while, is your most improved and Mike Stauffer wins coach of the year for us at basically 70 wins. So that's great. And uh, yeah, let's take a full look at the standings. I mean, 70 wins basically is tremendous. Best record in all of basketball. Looks like the Spurs are over there still playing very, very well. So D. Wade, just an incredible rookie season. If a man named LeBron James didn't exist, I'm sure this man right here is winning uh, rookie of the year. Mike Miller was good. Grant Hill, at this point in his career, he's 31 years old, about 14 points, eight rebounds, six assists. That's all I can really ask for. I mean, that is a tremendously well-rounded game, especially for somebody who's over 30. Uh, Earl Boinkins, Eric Dampier, Walter McCarty, DeClaric, Bo Outlaw. Rebounds was Eric Dampier, and assists was Team Max. So, we have, or excuse me, Orlando. we have Toronto here in round one. Obviously, this is the team that beat us last year. There's a couple changes, but still, a, a solid team. I, I do want to say so. I got to compliment them when they beat you last year. We're up 3-0, and we sweep them. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Atlanta here in the second round. Jason Terry, Felipe Lopez, Glenn Robinson, Sharif Abdul-Rahim, Carlos... Holy shit. All right, so some good, good, solid players in that starting five for Atlanta. We're 2-2 with them right now. We go up 3-2. We're going to Game 7, thank God. We are in the Eastern Conference Finals once again, this time taking on the Miami Heat, who have Carmelo Anthony. They got him third overall. Dwayne Wade, obviously, who they got in real life. Uh, oh, they have Karan Butler coming off the bench. Strong Miles Swift, holy shit. Uh, Gilbert Arenas is here, so I don't know how that happened, but yeah, let's just... Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Didn't mean to do that, and it worked out for us, and we're in the NBA Finals. And we're taking on Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and the rest of the San Antonio Spurs. Jermaine O'Neal signed here. He was a free agent too. How do you have money for him and Timmy? Oh, that's insane. I don't know if I can beat this team. That team is absolutely bananas. We're up 2-0 right now. Make it. Oh, my God. I don't know how this is happening, but when this game is nice to me, I don't really question it. So can we, can we close them out? I don't want to give them even a single ounce of breath to possibly come back and win this series. Okay, does not appear that it's going to be happening right now. We're back in Orlando here for Game 5. Please just end it right now. Please, for the love of God, do not do this to me. Oh, 2K. 2K, 2K, 2K. Hold the lead, hold the lead, hold the lead. All right, I'll see you guys in there. Obviously, oh my God, Earl Boinkins is small. Obviously, it's good to be winning one here in Year 2. And that's that's all high and well, but uh, we still have years to go. And uh, I'd like to do that, so... Cool scoreboard. I always forget how cool, you know, some of these historic things look. But, yeah, I mean, as long as we're not significantly blowing a really big lead, then uh, it looks like this one's going to be wrapped up. But second free throw for Boykins up 
it is good. So, I mean, we're up by 20 with 308 left. Hypothetically, this should be done. Earl Boinkins is so small. Holy, I mean, he just looks like, I don't even know. It's like a midget. He really does. Uh, T-Max got 22, 9, and 9 on the night. He's a potential finals MVP for us. That's Bruce Bowen just absolutely cooking me. And good rebound right there from Mike Miller, who is 27, 11, and 4. All right, I want to use T-Mac a little bit. It's not every day I get to use him in this game. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty good himself. So let's just blow by whoever the hell that is. Misses the shot, and that sucks. All right, I mean, I don't really think we're at a point where we need to be stressing too much. I think this one's basically over. So hang with me for a little while. Ooh, Tony Parker. Prime Tony Parker was so fun. He doesn't get enough credit for how important he was to this team. T-Mac on Timmy Duncan here. Let's see how this works. Okay, Mr. Fundamental is just going to do everything, and he's going to absolutely cook me. All right, so, uh, yeah, I mean, probably one or two more possessions here with T-Mac. I'd like to see if we can get a pick, and maybe T-Mac can dunk the ball. That'd be sick. T-Mac. <laughs> I mean, I said it. I spoke it into existence. Tracy McGrady, I hope he wins a Finals MVP. That would just be very cool, because I believe T-Mac, was he on that, what was it, 2013, maybe 2014 Spurs team that made it to the Finals? Ended up losing to LeBron in the Heat. I forget, I forget exactly which one it was, but I know he was in the finals. I forget. I'm, my memory is not great, especially with years that are way too far back. Okay, how tall is our boy? Is he five eleven? I'm like that. I mean, he just looks like like so small compared to everybody else here. T Mac gonna miss the jump shot, and I can't get the rebound. That's on me. Jermaine O'Neal versus Boykins is so funny. Parker gonna take the three. He's gonna miss it. Easy rebound for O'Neal. He's going to be able to put that back in. All right, we'll do one more possession here. I'm still going to use T-Mac just because, again, not every single day I get to. He just has so much style. He just looks so cool. He really does. Uh, give me the pick. I want to dunk again, preferably on Jermaine O'Neal. I think that would be cool. All right, that's a foul. They're not going to get it, but I'll see you guys with the finals MVP. We end up winning it all here in year two. That's obviously great, and it alleviates some pressure. 25-year-old Tracy McGrady is your finals MVP. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the work's not done yet. We obviously still have some time. And some things to do. So Stockton, Carl Malone, Steve Kerr, Horace Grant, Avery Johnson. These guys all call a career at this point in time. Staff retirement, Everett Bennett, I don't know. And uh, yeah, Stockton and Mr. Malone here. Uh, Jersey retirement, same thing there. And then historic changes. Are they not going to change my logo or uniform? Which is good. I don't want them to. I like it the way it is. All right, so draft lottery. Um, I don't think we've traded for any picks in here. I just want to double check. Does not appear so. Uh, and the Trailblazers end up with number one. I don't think we have our own pick. Yeah, I see the Jazz have it right there, so that's fine. Uh, Stalfer is obviously good. We're not going to make any two major, major changes. I don't foresee anything too crazy coming. We have the 20th pick in round two, which I don't need, so we're good there. Let's head up to team player options right now. I don't even think we have any major free agents, to be quite honest with you. Uh, is Mike Miller a free agent? He might be. That is important if he is. He is. All right, we got to make sure we get him back. Obviously, we don't have a lot of money. We're not going to really be able to sign anybody else, but we do have to clean up this bench a little bit. Hopefully, go ahead and get, get a couple guys who are maybe a little bit more reliable. So, Miller coming back, that's obviously important at this point in time. Uh, we're good with the backcourt, new backup three, and a new backup center. So, let's look at my options here. Gerald Wallace is 21, and he's here. Hell yeah. I didn't think, why is 21-year-old Gerald Wallace here? He'd still be on a rookie contract. Uh, and then in terms of the center spot, I mean, these these options aren't great by any means. So Gary Trent's there. Honestly, let's, let's try to do some sort of sign and trade with Gary Trent. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, seeing if something sticks and we can find some sort of trade. Again, we do have some draft assets that I could potentially move as well. Bo Outlaw also is a little old and probably going to go down in overall. So hang with me because we have a lot of draft picks here. So Bo Outlaw and two future for... Okay, that's not what I meant to do. Holy shit. Okay, Bull Outlaw in two future firsts. I'm looking for either center or power forward. Uh, Michael Oluokandi is 29. I mean, it's not terrible. Actually, 10 and 6.5 and last year. I could low-key live with that. Eaton Thomas is here. He's 25, about 7 and 9 last year. Again, we're just trying to get some depth pieces that are a little bit better than the ones we had last year. So, you know, let's screw it. Let's go ahead and pick up Eaton Thomas. We're also getting Eduardo Nahara, who is, again, not a name I've heard in a minute, but... Hey, we're getting a little bit younger. We're getting a little bit better in terms of overall, and I'm pretty happy with the moves we've made so far. So do I just let Gary Trent be my backup here moving forward? I just feel like his overall might go down. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it Oh, Boykins is 5'5". 
I did not know that. I thought he was a little bit taller. Holy shit. Well, it makes sense why he looks so small now. Um, okay, we have a couple more trades, I think. We're going to see if we make a slight upgrade to our starting center spot. Eric Dampier was great for us. Marcus Camby would be a three overall upgrade. It makes sense here for my final season. So um, I don't really need any of these draft picks, but I also don't really need Eduardo Nahara, so he can be in the trade if you want. And then quite honestly, I can't take these picks with me, so I'll just go ahead and use them right now. Now, I was considering trading Grant Hill as well, just because, again, he's pushing... 31 32 his overall is probably going to go down but you know what is what it is at this point i will see you guys at the start of the third and final year fresh off the championship it's the final season for us here in orlando Dwayne wade is progressing quite nicely we're seeing a little bit of regression with grant hill but i wanted to keep him throughout the entirety of this video i'm happy we were able to help him win a championship here with us Dwayne wade tracy mcgrady mike miller grant hill marcus canby tremendous starting five the bench got a little better gerald wallace earl boykins eaton thomas gary trent and, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a couple other fillers down here. So, it's a nine-man rotation. Everything's feeling good. Everything's looking good. Hopefully, we play good. See you guys in a year three. It is back-to-back -back MVPs for Tracy McGrady. But more importantly, we go 74-8, and eight, which is the greatest record in NBA history. At the time of this, you know, technically, it would still be 72-10. and 10, But nonetheless, 74 wins. Beautiful. Trace McGrady, another MVP. Beautiful. You'll love to see it. Dwight Howard's Rookie of the Year. He is in Portland. Lamar Odom, Sixth Man of the Year. Timmy D is your deep boy. Smush Parker, most improved. Stafford, that's the second straight coach of the year. So we're looking forward to hopefully another very long playoff run and another championship here in Orlando. It would be great to see. Here's a look at the numbers on the season. I mean, back-to-back -back MVPs is just so hard to do, but so fun at the same time. Uh, it's going to be the 8th seed of Boston Celtics. Howard Isley, Kyle Korver, Paul Pierce, The Truth, Antoine Walker, Ben Baker, Speedy Claxton off the bench. All right. You're good. I love you, Paul Pierce, but uh, thanks for coming. Detroit, Chauncey Billups, Tony Allen, LeBron. Oh, my God. Nick Collison, Ben Wallace. Holy shit. All right. That team should probably be better than a five seed. Just my take. But, uh, yeah, thanks for coming again. And it is Atlanta here, who I believe we faced in the semis last year in the Eastern Conference Finals this time. And, again, really good team. A team I actually wouldn't mind doing a rebuild with. But I just think we're better. I really do. And uh, we sweep. I mean, it is what it is. Phoenix Suns, Stephon Marbury, David Wesley, Sean Marion, Larry Sarmai, I have no idea who Alvin Rivers is, Marcus Pfizer off the bench. All right, can we get by the Phoenix Suns here and win our second straight championship to cap off the video? This team's just too good. That is now two finals MVPs, two regular season MVPs for Mr. Tracy McGrady. I think, uh, yeah, he'd probably be a little bit happier if the career worked out that way. But insane season, insane team, insane rebuild nonetheless. I had a ton of fun with this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you guys want to see more historic rebuilds, let me know which one's down below in the comment section. I'm happy we're getting back into these. It's great. I really do enjoy them. Hopefully you guys do as well. So that's pretty much it, man. This video has been long enough, so I'll wrap it up right now. But as always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. Catch you guys all in the next one.